To look at him, Jack Warner seems harmless enough, maybe even likable. Elegantly dressed at all times, trim of physique, slightly balding and proud of the mustache growing on his upper lip. If he invited you out for a beer and you didn't know better, you'd probably accept. That would be a mistake. Warner is a typical film mogul, opinionated and used to getting his own way. With the connivance of his two surviving brothers, Harry and Al, he runs the studio with an iron fist. He loves a fight and he seldom loses. Betty Davis found that out the hard way. I only met him once and I'd never been invited to his office. Now as Charlie and I step into the inner sanctum, I am feeling a little queasy. He looks up, but he doesn't rise from his seat as he gestures to the two chairs side by side in front of his desk. They are low slung and his own chair is elevated so that we look up and he looks down. This is standard operating procedure for all studio heads and it never fails to intimidate. Both Charlie and I are savvy enough to keep our mouths shut until Mr. Warner speaks and when he finally does, he's almost pleasant. He ignores Charlie and addresses me. Mr. Bernardi, you are relatively new here, he says. Yes, sir. And I have been given to understand you are doing a first-rate job for us. Well, thank you, sir. Bogart speaks highly of you. I remember how well Bogie and I got along in Mexico last year. I smile inwardly. Very gracious of him, sir, I say. Well, Bernardi, I can tell you that whatever the little prick thinks doesn't mean jack shit to me, Warner says, and I think I see his face starting to color. Do you know what that son of a bitch has done? He started his own production company, and he's over at Columbia filming some goddamn Goody Two Shoes lawyer picture. I look over at Charlie, who is stone faced and staring straight ahead. I look back at Warner. I didn't know, sir. That idiot Harry Cohn. Not a clue. If Bogart can do it, then why not Flynn or Davis or half the goddamn stars in heaven over at MGM? Independent companies, my ass. Jimmy Stewart's turning into a damn millionaire because of that deal Wasserman made for him over at Universal. Jesus Christ, the damned inmates are starting to run the asylum. Beat Red is now showing through his excellent tan. I don't know what to say, so I just shake my head in sympathy. After a few moments, Warner also shakes his head. I think maybe the rant is over. The red is fading. He looks at me curiously. Enough of Bogart. I understand you've been annoying Sean Flaherty, he says. Excuse me, I say? Are you deaf, Mr. Bernardi? Have you been annoying Mr. Flaherty, or haven't you? Actually, Mr. Warner, I've never said a word to the man, except to say hello when we were introduced. The reason I ask is, Mr. Flaherty is good friends with my brother Harry. Several years ago, Flaherty helped Harry buy up a huge chunk of the San Fernando Valley, and it's turned Harry into a mega millionaire. Again, I say I didn't know. Well, you know now. So do us all a favor and stay away from Flaherty so I don't have to have my ear bitten off by another long-distance call from my brother in New York. Yes, sir. Warner nods. Then he says, I'm sorry about the trouble your ex-wife is in. Oh, thank you, sir. Now get out of here, both of you.